Goalkeepers nowadays need not to only prevent opponents from scoring, but play their part in instigating attacks from defence, be it through short passes to the centre-backs or raking long balls out wide. All the top teams that like to play an expansive style of play and play out from the back have got goalkeepers that are firstly great shot stoppers, but also great with their feet. Over the last couple of weeks, you may have heard that Manchester United brought the curtain down on a 12-year stay at the Red Devils for David De Gea. Eric Ten Hag made a bold decision in not extending his stay, despite the goalkeeper winning the Golden Glove and keeping 17 clean sheets in the 2022-2023 season. The reason for this was to pursue a goalkeeper that plays better to his system. Which brings us to today's case, Andrea Unana. The man Manchester United has signed this summer for a fee of 55 million euros. In today's video, we're going to get to know him and take a look at his rise, his fall and his rise again to becoming one of the most sought after goalkeepers in world football and why he just may change Manchester United's goalkeeping fortunes around. But before we do get into today's video, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily football content. Andre Unana, born on April 2nd, 1996 in Cameroon, had a dream of playing football from a young age. He began his football journey in his native country, where he showed tremendous potential and caught the eye of the Samuel Eto'o Foundation. This opportunity led him to La Masia, the renowned training center for players under the guidance of the African scoring legend himself. It was in 2010 when Unana arrived in Barcelona, joining the prestigious club and starting his training in the lower category. Categories. His exceptional skills and growth didn't go unnoticed as he impressed not only within the club but also in the 2014-15 UEFA Youth League. As a part of the juvenile A Barca, Andrea showcased his talent on a grand stage, defending the title and drawing the attention of other clubs including Ajax Amsterdam. Ajax, recognizing his immense potential, made a firm bet on the young goalkeeper. In January 2015, Unana embarked on his second significant football journey, joining the Dutch club known for developing Developing young talents. Initially, he competed in the Jong Ajax, the second team, while training with the first team under the guidance of Frank de Boer. The big breakthrough for Unana came in the summer of 2016. Jasper Klinsen's departure to Barcelona, coupled with Andrea's excellent performances, allowed him to secure a starting position under the commander Peter Bos. This period marked a turning point in his career, showcasing his skills and cementing his place in the team. On September 6, 2016, another milestone arrived for Unana as he made his debut for the national team of Cameroon in a friendly match against Gabon. Playing the full game, he celebrated a victory of 2-1. Months later, he was called up to compete in the Confederations Cup in Russia, where he had the opportunity to play alongside his cousin, Fabrice Ondoa. Back in Amsterdam, Andrea's performances continued to impress. On August 20th, 2016, he made his official debut against Willem Twen, and just eight days later, he delivered a stunning performance against Go Ahead Eagles, saving a penalty shot with a spectacular intervention. This marked a significant achievement as it had been three and a half years since an Ajax goalkeeper had saved a penalty. Throughout the 2016-17 season, Unana stood out in the squad that amazed European football with their bold and captivating style of play. He played 46 official matches, including League and Europa League games. In the Europa League tournament, Ajax managed to beat teams like Schalke and Lyon, where they would then get to the final before losing to Manchester United. In the Eredivisie, they also fought for the title until the final day, with Andrea ending the season as the goalkeeper with the fewest goals conceded. The next campaign, Unana again cemented himself as a mainstay in the team as he played 38 games in all competitions. However, despite asserting himself as Ajax's number one, the club had a very poor campaign as they crashed out of the Champions League and Europa League qualifiers, which marked the first time the club hadn't competed in Europe since the 1990-91 season. However, things would change at the start of 2018 as Marcel Kaiser was sacked and replaced by at the time an upcoming coach, Eric Ten Hag, which would ultimately start a very successful period for both Unana and Ajax. The 2018-19 campaign was a remarkable one for Ajax as they competed in the Eredivisie, the KMVB Cup and the prestigious UEFA Champions League. Little did anyone know that this season would become one for the history books. Ajax demonstrated their dominance in the domestic league, clinching the Eredivisie title for the first time in five years, which also signified Unana's first major trophy as a professional. But their achievements didn't stop there. They also secured the KMVB Cup, marking their first double since the 2001-2002 season. The club was on fire and the success was just getting started. However, it was in the UEFA Champions League where Ajax truly captured the world's attention. They kicked off the knockout rounds by facing the defending champions Real Madrid in the round of 16. Against all odds, Ajax delivered a 
stunning performance, knocking out the mighty Real Madrid and progressing to the next stage. The quarterfinals brought another formidable opponent, this time in Juventus. But once again, Ajax rose to the occasion and emerged victorious. Their victory secured them a place in the semi-finals, a feat they hadn't achieved since 1997. The semi-final clash against Tottenham Hotspur would forever be etched in the memories of football fans worldwide. In a thrilling encounter, Ajax came agonizingly close to securing a spot in the final. They were just seconds away from victory when Tottenham's Lucas Moura scored a last-minute goal, shattering Ajax's dreams and sending Tottenham to the final in Madrid on away goals. It was a heartbreaking moment for Ajax and their fans, but their journey throughout the season was nothing short of extraordinary. Unana finished with global recognition and was also named in the Eredivisie team of the year. The following campaign would see Ajax dominate once more, and Unana would go on to play 39 times in all competitions. However, despite the club's domestic dominance, there was no league title given out, as the Dutch Football Association cancelled the season and marked the campaign as null and void after COVID-19 struck. Ajax, though, would return victorious the following campaign, securing yet another cup and league double, but halfway through the season after playing 26 games in all competitions, Unana was banned from playing football for 12 months by UEFA. The reason is that one morning he woke up with a headache and reached for an aspirin, which turned out not to be aspirin at all, but the furimosicide that had been prescribed to his pregnant wife. The packets aren't so different, nor are the actual pictures pills, and so, Unana says, he accidentally took the wrong thing. That's his version of events, and it's a version accepted by UEFA. They concluded that Unana had not tried to cheat, they also concluded that they had to ban him anyway. It is a player's duty, they insist, to ensure that no banned substances enter their bodies. Furimosicide is not a performance-hancing drug, but it can be used as a masking agent, and is on UEFA's list of prohibited substances. He was handed a 12-month ban, and had they judged that he deliberately cheated, it could have been four years. Ajax joined him in appealing against the decision. The ban was reduced just to nine months by the Court of Arbitration for Sports in June. Unana said that he respected the UEFA appeals body, but didn't agree with their decision, which he described at the time was excessive and disproportionate, as it had been acknowledged by UEFA it was an unintentional mistake. Now this wouldn't be so bad if he was able to still train and be in around the squad, but that wasn't to be the case. UEFA bans do not just prevent players from playing, they prevent them from engaging in all football related activity. He wasn't allowed at Ajax, not their training grounds, not their team's facilities. It doesn't even matter if the team is there or not, and this may have just been the most significant element of it all. One that effectively makes the ban more than 12 months, extending and deepening its impact, which is already huge, not just on a player's career, but also on a player's welfare. In his words, he said, one year of football, it's like 10 years, it's an eternity. The sanction meant I couldn't go to matches, I couldn't train with a team, I couldn't attend the celebrations for the title at the end of the season, even even though I played 60% of the campaign. Every match up until the ban, how is that fair? I get it, the law is the law, right? You F up. You pay the price, and I paid. But sometimes you wonder, are they punishing you to teach you a lesson, or are they just doing it to hurt you? After a 10 months absence, Unana made his long-anticipated return back to football in the Champions League against Besiktas. The Dutch giants thumped the Black Eagles 2-1 at the Vodafone Park in Istanbul. Upon his return, he said, I was quite nervous before the game, but my teammates helped me through it. I'm especially happy that everything went well. It had been a long time since I was between the six. To play a match on this stage is crazy. I was quite nervous. Unana would go on to make a further 10 appearances across the campaign as Ajax won yet another Eredivisie title, which would prove to be his last as he left the Dutch Giants at the expiry of his contract, signing for Inter Milan on a free transfer on a five-year deal. Unana had another standout campaign as Inter Milan won the Supercoppa Italia and the Coppa Italia and made it to the Champions League final before losing to Manchester City. Unana made 41 appearances in his only campaign in Italy before Eric Ten Hag seek to reunion with Manchester United. Unana joins the club as their second signing of the summer for a fee of 55 million euros. Now, getting rid of a goalkeeper with 17 clean sheets last season and winning the Golden Glove is a big call on the service level, but the addition of Unana will be one that proves to be a good decision for the way that Ten Hag plays. The core reasoning behind United's interest in Unana was that he is far stronger performer with the ball at his feet than De Gea. Goalkeepers nowadays need not to only prevent opponents from scoring, but play their part in instigating attacks from defence be it through short passes to the centre-backs or raking long balls out wide. 
Unanar was hugely effective at helping set Inter on the front foot last season as he chipped in with 6.1 accurate long balls per 90, a significant improvement on De Gea, which was 4.9. In addition, despite looking to pick out an opponent from distance more frequently, the former outshunned the latter considerably. Unanar yielded a long ball success rate of 44.7% in Italy's top tier last term. That's a rise on De Gea's return of 35.7%. Considering United scored more counter-attacking goals than any other team in the Premier League last season, a goalkeeper capable of picking out a teammate from range would go a long way to benefiting this United side. Not only is Unana the superior goalkeeper with a ball at his feet, but his command of the area would be a huge bonus for Ten Hag's team. A goalkeeper who is prepared to come for crosses or long balls into the box eases pressure on the back line and crucially will exude confidence throughout the defence. Again, this is another area that Unana betters De Gea in. The Interman averaged 0.50 high ball claims per 90 in the Serie A last season. That an increase of the 32-year-old's return of 0.37. You only have to look at Edison's claim late on in the Champions League final to fully appreciate the importance of a goalkeeper who is prepared to come off his line in dominant fashion and it's another area where Unana thumps De Gea. While previously United would have prioritised other areas, Ten Hag's decision to actively pursue another goalkeeper on the back of the FA Cup final has taken them to Unana. The pair worked together at Ajax meaning the Dutchman is already aware of the Cameroon's strengths, which bodes well for United heading into next season. What do you guys think of Hunana's rise, fall and rise again? And do you back him to be a success with Manchester United? Yes or no? Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section below. That does bring us to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed, please do consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel for daily football content. And if you're still here, why don't you check out how Sandro Tonali became Newcastle United's most expensive ever signing. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.